tightness in your head, good body, body and mind, and then smile, drain on the wholesome thought by smiling, and keep the wholesome thought as long as you can. So you, you must use that. So when, and he, the second, the, when I abide in thirst, diligent, ardent, and resolute, a thought of ill, hatred, when hatred arises during meditation, so you again use the harmonious practice. Recognize it, release it, relax tension and tightness, and bring the whole something by smiling and keep the whole something as long as you can. Then, actually, in this sutra, there are many repetitions. So, they want to repeat again and again. You know, it, it will take a long time <laughs> to give Dhamma talk. So, and then he said here, when I abide thus, diligent, ardent, resolute, a thought of cruelty arose in his mind. Again, he used the harmonious practice. So, when it, you arise then, he's, again he said, like before, it, he, it subsided in me. He understood cruelty arose in his mind and he used the harmonious practice that is abandoned. Then, monks, whatever person frequently thinks and ponder upon, that will become the inclinations in their mind. If a person frequently thinks and ponders upon thoughts of sensual desire, they have abandoned the thought of renunciations to cultivate. So when unwholesome thought arises, you have to think wholesome immediately. So that way, unwholesome thought abandoned. You know, when greed arises, you think non-greed. When hatred arises, you have to think non-hatred. You know, so that wholesome, all the words wholesome. So, if a person frequently thinks and ponders upon thought of ill will, they have abandoned the thought of non ill will to cultivate the thought of ill will, and then that person's mind inclines to thought of ill will. So, here, um, number eight, renunciation. As I abide, abided thus, diligent, ardent, and resolute, a thought of renunciation arose in me. I understood thus. The thought of renunciation has arisen in me. So when wholesome thought arises in your mind, you know. Then that what you have to develop. When unwholesome thought arises in your mind, you know that you have to abandon. Otherwise, you cannot progress your meditation. You know? So, this does not lead to my own afflictions, to other afflictions, or to the afflictions of both. It aids wisdom, doesn't cause difficulties, leads to Nibbana. You see? If you develop it, it really leads to Nibbana. So, Nibbana means the highest peace. So, if I think upon our own, this thought, even for a night, even for a day, even for a night and day, I see, I see nothing to fear from it, he said. But with excessive thinking and pondering, I might tire my body. And when the body is tired, the mind becomes disturbed. When the mind is disturbed, it is far from collectedness. So when your mind is disturbed, you cannot meditate. When you feel sleepy, you know. I saw when I was practicing meditations, some people, they really want to practice. They want, really want to get something. And they push a lot. They sit only five minutes or ten minutes and they feel sleepy. <laughs> they cannot meditate. You know? So that's why keep smiling whenever you meditate. So because of the power of smiling, you see the other people when they see you, they start smiling. Oh, 
there is he or she, they are happy guys. <laughs> they are really happy, you know. <laughs> so they are also really smiling. <laughs> so here, so I studied my mind internally and quieted it, brought it to stillness and collected it. Why, why is that? So that my mind should not be disturbed. You know? So when, when, you are, when you are mindful, very mindful, then you'll see how unwholesome thought will arise in your mind. So I know only two, two things. The negative thought I have to abandon and the wholesome thought I have to develop. If you know only these this, this two things, you got it. You know how to practice this meditation. You know? So here he said, I studied my mind internally, quieted, brought it to stillness and collected it. Why is that? So that my mind should not be disturbed. As I abided thus, there is an ardent resolute, a thought of non evil arose in me and stood thus. This thought of non ill non ill will has arisen in me. So this does not lead to my own afflictions, to others' afflictions, to the afflictions of both. It aids wisdom, does not cause difficulties, and leads to Nibbana. It's the same thing, this repetition here. So here, one thing I want to say to, to you. Uh, did you study the, the Sutra before? Yes. Be? Oh, you have idea. Maybe sister, uh, she doesn't. But anyway, this book you can get, or the Sutra you can get online, you know. So, the Blessed One, the Buddha, first time he gave talk, and second time he repeated again, and third time he repeated again. Why? When you read the Sutta, you will see that. You know, during the Buddha's time, there are many, he taught even to the farmer who were uneducated. He was thinking, that those people, they will not understand if I give the talk, if I use the difficult word, you know. So he gave talk first time and second time he repeated again. First time, you know, when we listen something, I don't know what he is talking about. I, we couldn't catch, right? And second time he repeated again, oh, I got something, I understood something. And then third time it's become very clear. So that's why you'll see in the sutta there are three times repetitions. Many, many suttas, you know. So here I, number 11 months, whatever a person frequently thinks and ponders upon, that will become the inclinations of their mind. If a person frequently thinks and ponders upon thought of renunciations, they have abandoned the thought of sensual desire to cultivate. You see? When the same things they are repeating here, but I have to forward. I don't want to talk longer. No matter. <laughs> you know? So now he's talking about the jhana. How did he attain the jhana? So first time he said, Two kinds of thoughts. When sensual desire arises, I have to use the harmonious practice right away. When ill will or hatred arise in your mind, use the harmonious practice. When cruelty arises, use the harmonious practice. This is the negative thoughts, right? And then the next one. Wholesome thought arise, develop it. So we know that already. Now he's talking about how did he attain the jhanas? So jhana means the stage of meditation, right? So he said, 
tireless energy has a role in me and unremitting mindfulness was established. My body was tranquil and untroubled. So here, tranquil means also relax. You see, when I was practicing meditation in Myanmar, I, I studied I studied there about almost four years, three years, ten months at the International Theravada Buddhist Mission University. And I went meditation um, center for practicing. So teacher take the interview every day. They said, okay, how long do, do you sit? One hour. Sit longer. But you cannot sit on the chair. They don't allow. In, in Burma, you have to sit in the cushions. One hour, two hours, three hours. How can I sit there? Only one hour enough for me. More than one hour I cannot sit. You know what happened? My teacher, he's American. He's, he lived in, in Missouri. He established one big meditation center, 103 acres. So he went to Myanmar for practicing meditation. And teacher said, okay, sit, the caution, the cross leg. He sit longer, one hour, two hours, three hours, and eventually his leg was swelling, you know, so he has, he suffered a lot. So after returning back in this country, he said, there is no magic on the floor. <laughs> you know? So, so you can sit on a chair and meditate. It's really true. So, especially if you if you practice in Myanmar, if you sit on the chair, they say, no, 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 you have to sit with the cautions, the cautions, not on the chair. Especially the, in this country, the people in this country, they cannot see the cautions, you know, who are young, like Jesus, is good. <laughs> right? But uh, some people who are, you know, who have the problems, so they have to sit on the chair. There is no magic. Most important is the mind. So when you erect your body, sit on the chair, and you practice one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, then you'll see you get in jhana. First jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. Step by step, even though you are practicing on the chair, you know, you can get it. I saw a lot of people got a benefit after practicing on the chair. So that's why when I returned back from the Missouri, and I said, okay, do you want to, do you want to sit on the chair of cautions? The chair, yeah. okay, whatever you like. The most important is your mind, okay? So he had said, he's now going to explain about the first jhana. So you know the meaning of the jhana, right? Quite secluded from sensual pleasure, secluded from unwholesome states. I enter upon and abide in the first jhana, which is accompanied by thinking and examining thought with joy and happiness born of secretions. So this is the characteristic of the first jhana. That means when you meditate, he has said, secluded from sensual pleasure, hindrances, five hindrances will not arise. And then secluded from unwholesome states, all the unwholesome thoughts will not arise in your mind. What will arise? Thinking thought. Examining thought, joy, happiness, and unification of mind. These five factors will arise in your mind when you meditate loving kindness. I will explain how you practice loving kindness, okay? So then you attend the first jhana. So the, here the Buddha attained the first jhana exactly like that. And then the second he said, with the stealing of thinking and examining thought, I entered upward and abided in the second jhana, 
which is the self has self confidence. You see self confidence. When you attend the second jhana, thinking and examining thought stop arising. Only joy, happiness, and unification of mind arise. You'll have the self confidence. This meditation is really work. It's really helpful. It's changing, changing my mind. Then you have self confidence. I have to continue. You know? So then he attained the second jhana, second stage of meditation. And then with the fading away of joy, I abided in the equanimity and mindful and fully aware, still feeling happiness with the body. I entered upon and abided in the third jhana. On account of which in the words announced, he has a pleasant abiding, he has equanimity and is mindful. So, when you meditate, meditating, you see joy stop rising. Joy is not rising anymore. Only happiness and unification of mind. So, what is the difference between joy and happiness? <laughs> I know, you are going to ask me. <laughs> you see? <laughs> because when I explain this, they, they are ready to ask the questions. <laughs> so, joy means when you attend the first jhana, second jhana, you feel so excited. Oh man, this is something good. You know, I feel so 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 good you know delighting this is joy and happiness when you meditate 30 minutes 20 minutes you feel so light mind and body oh, so light comfortable this is happiness got it this is happiness and what is the meaning of the unification of mind you mind into one one point in it. You might go here and there, here and there, right? You might into one. This is called the unification of mind. So he attained the third jhana, right? And then now he is going to explain the fourth. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain, with the various disappearances of joy and grief, I entered upon and abided in the fourth jhana, which has a neither painful nor pleasure and purity of mindfulness due to equanimity. So you see, when you meditate, now is the time to explain about a loving kindness. So you sit down, erect your body, no back and forth, you know, erect your body. Then you see, remember a time when you were happy. Like we are friend here. Bill start, uh, he smiled with me. I smiled with him. Right? So remember a time when you were happy. A few minutes ago, you smiled with me, right? So you smile with me. You are a meditator. So close your eyes. Okay, I smile with Bhante. Remember that smiling and bring up the center of your chest. Okay? Bring the center of your chest. And when you feel warm and glowing feeling, the center of your chest. Then you start radiating loving kindness to yourself. May I be happy. May I be calm. May I be peaceful. May I be full of joy. May I be content. And so on. You just radiate loving kindness to yourself slowly. Not too fast, okay? Slowly. When you radiate loving kindness to yourself, you must feel it. You must feel it. This is the feeling and a smiling meditation. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> Do you? When you keep smiling, that means that you keep your mind light, clear, pure, agile. All the time. You are developing the wholesome. Okay? And then, you feel how your radiation is going on to yourself. Ten minutes only. Only ten minutes you radiate to yourself, right? And after ten minutes, how will you know ten minutes already gone? You just guess it. 
Okay? Oh, maybe 10 minutes already gone. And choose a spiritual friend. So, Bill is man, choose man. Like Bhante. Bhante is my spiritual friend, I have to choose him. Some people, you know, they, they said, okay, I don't have any spiritual friend. I cannot find any spiritual friend. Some people, you know, they, when they came here, they meditate. Say, Bante, Bante, I don't have very spiritual friend. What should I do? Okay, choose me. It's very easy. So, remember how Bante smiled with you. So, if you can visualize, when you close your eyes, if you can visualize my, face, my smiling face, these are the good things. But if you cannot, no problem, that's fine. So, how do you do that? Remember your friend smile. The brain of the central resist when you feel warm and glowing feeling. Then you radiate loving kindness to your spiritual friend. May my friend be happy. May my friend be calm. May my friend be full of joy. May my friend be content. May my friend be happy, peaceful. So you'll see from here how your relations is going to your friend. You'll feel that. Okay? So, when you meditate like this, you attend first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, and then last one, the fourth jhana. Then you see, you're feeling from here, that's why I said, you must feel it when you radiate loving kindness. Okay? Then you see, you're feeling from here, it will go top of your head. No more here. Okay? To go top of your head. So then some people think, where is my feeling? Where is my feeling? I cannot find my object of meditation. <laughs> it's really go to top of your head. So that times don't press down. This is a good good sign for you. Just let it be there. Then that moment, hear what the Buddha said. Your mind, the purity of mindfulness, due to equanimity, you'll have the balance. Your mind will be very balanced. You know, you'll have equanimity. Your mindfulness will be very purity, you know. So, that time you ate in the fourth jhana. So, this is the experience of the Blessed One. Now, he's going to explain. With the abandoning of pleasure and pain, with the previous disappearance of joy and grief, I entered, and entered upon and abided in the fourth jhana, which, the, which has neither pain nor pleasure and period of mindfulness due to equanimity. When my collected mind was, was thus purified, bright, unblemished, right of imperfection, malleable, wealthy, steady, and attained to imperturbability, I directed it to knowledge of the recollections of the past lives. So he can now say what is what, what happened in the past. How many times was he born? He's going to explain now. He could see because he became enlightenment already. Now he said, I recollected my manifold past lives. That is one bird, two birds, three birds, four birds, five birds, ten birds, twenty birds, 30 birds, 40 birds, 50 birds, a hundred birds, a thousand birds, a hundred thousand birds, many eons of world contractions, many eons of world expansions, many eons of world contraction and expansions. You see, he could see everything. This one some people, they don't believe. Because this is his experience. Not my experience, not other experience, right? Some people they don't believe the rebirth. It's okay. 
There I, I was so named of such a clan with such an appearance, such was my nutriment, such my experience of pleasure and pain, such my lifetime. And passing away from there, I reappear elsewhere. You see, he could see, he could say everything. From there, he reborn another place. And there too, I was so named of such a clan, with such an appearance, such was my nutriment, such my experience of pleasure and pain, such my life term, and passing away from there, I reappeared here. Thus, we did their expects and particulars I recollected my manifold past lives. This was the first true knowledge attained by me in the first watch of the night after attaining enlightenment. This is the first knowledge he attained. So now, the next ignorance was banished and true knowledge arose. That means he understood the Four Noble Truths. Now he is going to explain. Darkness was banished and radiance arose, as happens in one who abides, diligent, ardent, and resolute. When my recollected mind was thus purified, bright, and blemished, right of imperfection, malleable, wealthy, steady, and attained to imperturbability, I directed it to knowledge of the passing away and reappearance of beings with the divine eye. You see, he got a divine eye. Some people, you know, when they meditate, they think that Pante, how can I get it? Divine eye. <laughs> Don't expect that. When you meditate, your purpose is to attain Nibbana. When you Continue, practice, practice, it may come. During the Buddha's time, one, no, one novice, he was a very young guy, he was practicing meditations, and he got one sort of knowledge, 